Hi there. Thanks again for being here in this class. I really appreciate it and I hope that your dogs are already making progress, but they definitely will by the end of this. So one thing I wanted you to think about is where your walks are. So I mentioned, or I will mention at the very least, that following your dog is a great thing. So that most of the walk is kind of their choice as to where they go. And of course that means that we don't just let them go into traffic and that we're also mindful of how long we have to walk them. So for example, if you have only one hour to walk your dog, then you don't just want to go for 30 minutes as far as you can in one direction, which would then force you to walk quickly back the other direction. So stay relatively closer to home so that you have the opportunity to be able to meander and let your dog choose. Now, other things to think about are the concept of distance and obstacles. So if your dog has some sort of trigger, like maybe they're, they're reactive to children or they're worried about dogs or they're really excited to see other dogs, then you would want to have some sort of obstacle between them at this point until the training is, is fully effective. So some sort of obstacle between like a tree or a car or um, yourself, but the more there's sort of a buffer between, the easier it's going to be on your dog. The other thing is distance. So if you're across the street, that's going to be way easier than if you're trying to walk directly past them. Also, the, the direction of your walking. So if you go in a uh, directly past another dog, the implication is that they would be meeting, and so they're likely to get more excited, and that can be in a more friendly way or a less than friendly way. So it's better to be walking in curves. So if you're, if the other dog is coming this way, that you go in an arc around and make that really clear. Even better if you can go around an obstacle in between if your dog is not yet ready to handle that. So anytime that your dog starts to bark or lunge or pull, it just means that there could have been some sort of different choice likely um, that would have avoided that. Now, of course, if you're in a really urban situation, that's bound to happen sometimes. But anytime it does happen, think to yourself, could I have avoided that? Rather than thinking that your dog should be able to do it already, can you create a different walk that's easier for your dog and therefore easier for you? So those are my tips for now, and I look forward to talking to you in the next video.